Welcome to the installation video for the Quark Shockwiz. This video will guide you through the mounting process for various front suspension forks, as well as rear shocks. Your Shockwiz package includes Shockwiz, a Shockwiz rubber mounting boot, four cable ties, and two hoses of different lengths to allow for different mounting positions. You will also need a pair of wire cutters, a lint-free rag, isopropyl alcohol, and safety glasses. Install the rubber mounting boot onto Shockwiz in the desired orientation. The rubber mounting boot can be installed in multiple orientations. Choose the orientation that best fits your suspension. Failure to install the included protective rubber mounting boot onto Shockwiz may cause damage to the fork and or rear shock. Remove both air caps and set them aside. Continue watching to view instructions for both suspension forks and rear shocks. Click this link to view only instructions for rear shocks. Remove any dirt and grease on the fork with a clean rag and isopropyl alcohol to ensure a clean mounting surface. Remove the positive air spring inflation valve cap from the fork. Do not attach shock whiz to or allow contact with the fork upper tubes or any part of the fork that moves during compression, such as the lower legs or the lower leg arch. The Shockwiz air inflation valves are oriented at differing angles for various mounting orientations. Your suspension design may vary. Test fit the position and orientation of Shockwiz before installation. Choose the optimal air valve orientation for your suspension. When installed, the air inflation valves must not contact the frame or fork crown. The air inflation valve oriented away from the fork inflation valve must be accessible for shock pump installation. When mounting to a traditional single crown fork with a forward arch, position shock whiz on the back side of the crown on the damper side. When mounting to a single crown fork with a reverse arch, position shock whiz on the front of the crown on the damper side. If you're mounting to a dual crown fork, position shock whiz on the front of the fork's upper crown on either side. The device can be attached to any location and in any orientation on the upper crown that the length of the hose will accommodate. For fat bike forks with a forward arch, position shock whiz on the rear of the crown on the air inflation side. While holding shock whiz in the desired position, turn the handlebars in both directions to ensure that the device does not make contact with the frame. Attach shock whiz to the fork using cable ties. Cut the excess from the cable ties. Select the hose that best spans the distance from the shock whiz air inflation valve to the fork air inflation valve. Thread the hose connector onto the shock whiz air valve hand tight. Thread the other hose connector onto the fork's air inflation valve hand tight. Do not use tools to tighten the hose connector. Use of tools can damage the connector and air valve. Do not kink the Shockwiz hose. Kinks will damage the hose. Shockwiz must not contact the fork lower leg arch, fork upper tubes, bicycle frame, tire, components, or the rider during use. Contact while riding can cause Shockwiz to disconnect from the fork and could cause a crash resulting in serious injury to the rider. Turn the handlebars to the left and to the right to confirm shock whiz and the hose assembly do not contact the frame at any point during the full range of turning motion. If shock whiz or the hose assembly contact the frame, adjust as needed. For single crown forks, release all the air from the fork and compress the fork to full bottom out to confirm shock whiz does not contact the tire. If shock whiz or the hose assembly contact the tire, adjust as needed. Bounce the front wheel to turn on shock whiz. It will turn off automatically when idle for 10 minutes. Pair shock whiz with the shock whiz app. 
which will guide you through the calibration process. This concludes the front fork mounting procedure for Shockways. Remove any dirt and grease on the shock with a rag and isopropyl alcohol to ensure a clean mounting surface. Identify and remove the positive air spring valve cap from the rear shock. Do not attach shock whiz to or allow contact with any part of the shock that moves during compression, such as the shock body. The shock whiz air inflation valves are oriented at differing angles for various mounting orientations. Your suspension design may vary. Test fit the position and orientation of ShockWiz before installation. Choose the optimal air valve orientation for your suspension. When installed, ShockWiz must not contact the shock body shaft, frame, rider, or other components. The air inflation valve oriented away from the shock inflation valve must be accessible for shock pump installation. Position shock whiz with the curved side of the rubber cover against the air can near the shock inflation valve. Attach shock whiz to the air can using cable ties through the guide holes of the curved side of the rubber boot. Cut the excess from the cable ties. Select the hose that best spans the distance from the ShockWiz air inflation valve to the rear shock inflation valve. Thread the hose connector onto the ShockWiz air valve. Tighten the connector hand tight. Thread the other hose connector into the rear shock's air inflation valve. Tighten the connector hand tight. Do not use tools to tighten the hose connector. Use of tools can damage the connector and air valve. Do not kink the ShockWiz hose. Kinks will damage the hose. ShockWiz must not contact the shock body shaft or reservoir, bicycle frame, tire, components, or the rider during use. Contact while riding can cause ShockWiz to disconnect from the shock and could cause a crash resulting in serious injury to the rider. Sit on the bicycle to compress the shock. Pedal backwards and confirm that ShockWiz does not contact the frame, crank arm, components, or the rider. If ShockWiz or the hose assembly make contact, adjust as needed. Cycle the shock to turn on ShockWiz. ShockWiz will turn off automatically when idle for 10 minutes. Pair ShockWiz with the ShockWiz app, which will guide you through the calibration process. This concludes the mounting process for ShockWiz on rear shocks.